Strawberries are one of the easiest plants to grow, and they grow in a lot of different places and environments. And who doesn't love strawberries? Today we're going to talk about proper timing and replanting strawberries in our zone here in 8B in East Texas. Let's get going. So you can see this bed behind me is where I had my strawberries last year, but they're places where there aren't any, there's places where they're highly uh, congregated or crowded together, they need to be replanted. The beautiful thing about strawberries is they love to have the roots agitated. They do not mind it. And they take really well to replanting every year. And I also need to amend this bed and add more nutrition for these strawberries for this coming year. So let's talk about how strawberries grow, the soils they like, and the conditions that they thrive in. But first, let me tell you that this is the perfect time of year, in our zone anyway, 8B, to be replanting your strawberries or to be planting new strawberry crowns that you've just purchased. Strawberries can be planted six to eight weeks before your last frost. They thrive in the cold and they have no problem with it. It's only the hot summer sun, the super hot summer sun here in Texas anyway, that you need to be careful of. And a little shade cloth, like a 50% shade cloth over the top of them, will help bring them through those super hot summer days like we have here in Texas. And make sure wherever you are planting them, that you're planting them in an area that gets at least six to eight hours of full sun per day. So this variety here is called Seascape. This is an ever-bearing strawberry, and it bears fruit throughout the entire summer. It usually starts in about late May to early June, and for us, actually, it went through and still bore some really small fruit, but really sweet fruit, all the way up until November. Strawberries are extremely easy to plant and take care of. It doesn't take much for an amazing harvest of beautiful sweet berries. So you can see I've dug this one out of the ground. I'm just gonna place it in our tub here. I'm gonna do that for the entire bed and then replant all of these. And don't worry about if they sit in this tub for about 24 hours. The roots are still perfectly viable and fine. If they're gonna sit around longer than that, you might want to put them with a little moist towel in a plastic bag. So there are really three different ways that your strawberries multiply and that you can grow strawberries. One of them is by seed. Now, I don't recommend that because the rate at which you get uh, strawberry plants from the seeds is really low and it takes a long time for those to establish. You shouldn't need to do that at all because these plants are so amazing. This is called a mother plant or a mother crown, and these crowns will divide themselves. So I have found mother crowns that have five to six divisions in them. What you can do is just break them apart gently and pull the roots apart like this. This is a smaller one, this has two, but now we have two strawberry plants absolutely amazing. You should never ever have to buy strawberry plants more than one time. Okay, let's find some here, but as many of you know, strawberry plants, the mother plant, will also put out runners. And those runners will come across and they will establish themselves and root. Here is a perfect example of a daughter plant on a runner. The runner is still attached here. This is established, so it's fine to cut your runner. And here it is attached back to our big, beautiful, established mother crown. When we are replanting these, we want to get them at least 12 inches apart from one another. Honestly, I usually plant them a little closer because I'm a little starved for space. But they really, really spread out. Each one of these plants with that mother crown division and the daughter plants that it puts out can 15x or 15 times your number of strawberry plants. That is unbelievable. For any entrepreneurs out there, I think it would be fairly easy to start a strawberry farm or you pick strawberry farm. They're really easy to take care of. So let's get these old ones out of here and re-amend our soil, replant, and then find space for all the extra because I know we are gonna have some. So the best tool for this is a hori hori knife. You can get down really deep right next to the roots and just pop it up. So when you're taking these out, you can just cut that runner. And the only time you do that is if the roots on 
the daughter plant are fully established. Just take your hoary hoary knife, get it straight under. You might need to go around a few times. Kind of pry back the soil and just pop it up. And like I said, don't worry about the roots. They like being agitated. So be gentle, but you don't have to worry about it a lot. Now that we have our new bed partially prepped and the old strawberries out, let's talk about what we are going to add to it. And for us, we are going to add this Sustain organic fertilizer. It's a 464 fertilizer, and it's highly touted by a lot of organic growers. And we also like to add kelp meal, which is a great source of potash. But even more importantly, we are going to add compost from our compost pile. This is a mixture of all of our food scraps over the years, our chicken manure, our, you know, it's got coffee grounds in it and eggshells. It is a really rich, uh, wide ranging compost that is from everything on our property, including the leaves. Once we get our compost and our fertilizers established in the bed, we can start to transplant and replant those strawberries. About a half an inch to an inch of this compost should be perfectly fine. We'll add our sustain and then just a light sprinkling of the kelp meal. Now you can go over this with a garden rake. I usually turn mine over just to slightly mix in what I have on the top and just to smooth it out for the replanting process. Now strawberries do do well in a lot of different soil types, but the best one has a good amount of organic matter in it, and it is slightly alkaline. So about a 7.5 on the pH scale. But these things are so tough, you can grow them pretty much anywhere. But one thing, make sure that they don't have wet feet. So they like a well-drained soil. Most plants don't like to sit in a super moist soil that doesn't drain well. So just be aware of that. All right, let's start breaking these mother plants apart. And right now you can see I've got many that are actually starting to flower out. That's certainly an advantage of living in a zone like I do. Now there's something you need to be aware of when planting these. Let me show you down here. Is that when you're planting them, you need to keep this crown above the ground, especially if you get uh, bare root plants from a, an online nursery, it's not gonna have any green typically. So you wanna keep this, this crown right here, this base of the crown up. If you plant it too deep, it will not establish. Even though it has a good root base here, it's not gonna establish. So make sure that crown is pointed up properly and just above the surface. If you can't get the hole big enough, you can trim off some of these big roots, but I don't think it's really that necessary. Just get those roots tucked in like that, give it a good watering, and you are good to go. So we have a lot of strawberries that I need to move around and get replanted here. I've got a lot of work to do. If you have any questions, please leave them for me in the comment section below. Now go click on this series of videos right here, which shows you exactly how we built that greenhouse by ourselves. Have a beautiful, blessed day. We'll see you next time. Bye.